Back at it again. And it is a little later than I usually start again, but I'm just gonna do my best and figure it out. Today, I think I'm gonna start with the dots. Go from there, probably just do it real quick. Otherwise, I heard Iliad Kipchoge broke the two, two hour uh, marathon barrier, which is unbelievably incredible. Um, I've been trying to run the 400 lately, so I've been running 400s every day. Although yesterday I didn't run, which was a crazy story in itself. Like I've been running every day, like really hard. I've been doing sprint exercises. And yesterday I didn't run, and my body got so used to running the sprint exercises every day that I wasn't even hungry all day yesterday. I think because my body was used to breaking down 1,500 calories on the track. And then when I didn't do that, my body had enough food already. It was crazy. So my body's transforming a little bit too from all this exercise. Um, but you, you know, you wanna push yourself to a good limit. You know, there is, there is such a thing as working, working out too much. Um, I didn't run yesterday because I think my body's kinda figuring itself out a little bit right now. Because during the quarantine, I have been running almost every day, which I didn't do before. I was running two or three times a week before. I uh, twice a week call it. So when I have a full-time job, I usually only work out twice a week, sometimes once a week, um, depending on what I'm doing. But long story short, my body's definitely getting in better shape. And the sprint workouts are so intense sometimes that by not doing them yesterday, I wasn't even hungry because my body had those calories uh, that I didn't burn on the track. So I just didn't eat dinner because I just wasn't hungry because my body was used to burning 1,500 calories on the track, which is crazy. Um, so long story short, rest is good too sometimes, I guess is the, the moral of that story. And then otherwise, um, my quickness is improving, but okay, Kipchoge ran the under two, mi uh, two hour marathon. My goal in the 400 right now, the reason I'm doing a lot of this, I mean, really I wanna, I wanna jump higher, but the other, my other goal is to run a uh, one minute 400 and really, I, I, it's come to a point where it's like a 105, and I'd be, I'd be, I'd be happy with that. Um, I started with 112. My PR is like 111. I think I've never been a good 400 runner. Uh, I don't think I've ever broken 110. I might have ran 109 once when I was younger. Um, but I, I would, I, I would say 108. If I run a 108 on the track, I'm gonna call that a PR. I, I don't think I've ever run a 108 before. Um, but okay. To put that in perspective, Kipchoge ran a 434 mile pace the entire marathon, 26 consecutive miles. That is a 109 400 meter. <laughs> so Iliad Kipchoge ran, my goal for the 400 is like a 105. I'm working hard every day to try to accomplish that and for a few months, not not my whole life or anything, but for a few months I've been running every day trying to accomplish that, trying to get my, I, I have to run faster and I need more endurance. But long story long, Kipchoge's marathon pace is 109, 400, maybe even 108. So I haven't even run that fast in the 400, which is a quarter mile. And he ran that for 26.2 consecutive miles. Unreal, <laughs> unreal. Because for me to run a 105 is about 90, 95% of my sprint speed all the way around the track. I mean, that means Kipchoge ran 90% of my sprint speed for the entire marathon, <laughs> which is insane. Because I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm a little slow compared to most guys, I guess compared to athletes. I'm fast compared to most guys, but I'm slow compared to most athletes. But still like, I'm not that slow. And for him to run faster than me sprinting for an entire marathon is just a level of intensity that I don't think a lot of people can even comprehend. Like, I can't even run a 400 like that. Like, I don't have the mental capacity to run 90% sprint speed the whole track right now. It's not all mental, but a lot of it's mental. Like, I mean, some of it is how much you prepare your body, but a lot of it's mental. So that that is just incredible. Like. He ran 90% of my sprint speed the entire marathon. That's unbelievable. You know, if I run a 108, 400 this week, I'm gonna, that's my PR. <laughs> so that's, that's unbelievable. 
But yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to run like 110, 400 in the next week or two, and then I want to run a 105, and then I'll, I'll ease off the track a little bit. But I want to get arguably fast. So a fast to me is, you know, like show me like a 13 second 100 meter, show me like a, like a 30 second 200 meter, show me like a, like a minute 400. So that's where I'm trying to get to though, which is like pretty much average speed for an athlete. It's like a decent high school athlete level of athleticism. Uh, and that's where I'm trying to get to though, basically. And you know, we're, we're getting there though. I think I ran a 112 400 last week. So, but it's crazy to think that Kipchoge's marathon pace is faster than my 400 sprint speed. <laughs> it's crazy. Otherwise, the aerobics have been going really well. I think doing these in the morning and then running at night is a really good way to do it. And really, if you can run twice, that's even better. Because with sprints, you get tired by the fifth or sixth sprint, you're, you're losing speed, you're losing some of your, your max speed. When you're working on your max speed, it helps to take long rests too. So like with the 400, Lately, I've been doing sprinting one lap and then walking one lap. So I've been taking like a full two or three minute break between 400s, but it's a great workout. So I've been doing aerobics every day though and running two and a half miles at night at least five days a week. I was doing seven days a week. I must have just hit about 20 out of 21 days. but your body needs time to catch up. So like right now, my body needs a little bit of time to recover. My legs gotta catch up a little bit. I can feel myself getting leaner, my muscles strengthening up in my legs. But I gotta let my legs catch up, I gotta work on my, my inner muscles too. My lungs, my heart. I don't have that strength either because I haven't been doing squats at the gym because the gym's been closed. So I need, I'm buying an Olympic bar this week. So I'm gonna start doing squats at home. I'm gonna cancel my gym membership and then I'll, I'll hopefully I'll start getting in really good shape. So I'm about to buy an Olympic bar and then build my own squat rack. So I'm gonna build a squat rack out of wood and I'm going to start doing all my workouts at home and it should benefit me because you know when you're sitting around watching TV now when I'm sitting around watching TV I should be able to work out and that should help me get a little stronger too so I moved to DC I'm about to have like a full weight set in my in my room in my new apartment you know, when you're living alone though, running is key. Like when you're living alone, you have your own apartment, just log some miles. Like, cause not only is it great for your body though, it's exhausting as fuck. The workout should tire you out. You should take a nap afterward. Like lately, I've been taking a nap almost every day because I'm sprinting. My body, I mean, it, it, it hurts your entire body to do a sprint exercise. So lately I've been taking a nap, eating some juice. Woo! Start with that today. Dots are done, that was a crappy dot drill. I'm still trying to get my form down with the dots. I'm still working on form with the dots. Do a set of that. And then I'll do my vertical jumps and my triple triple jumps. I'm gonna turn the camera off after this. I just do one set of these. I just do one set of 30. So 15 each leg.
My knees are way stronger though. I mean, I can dunk easily on eight and, six, eight and a half now. But I can't like take off from a few feet away or anything. And it's crazy to think that like, I don't know. You don't see guys in the NBA get hung up enough. Like I get hung up out here on the eight and a half foot hoop, <laughs> trying to, trying to two hand, uh, everything else. So I'm not quite there yet though. So that goes to show you how athletic pro athletes are too. That they don't ever, like that they're dunking on 10 and they don't even get hung up. All right, now I'm gonna do my lunges. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my vertical jumps. <laughs> 